Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into the microphone. Why? Well, just because I can. And this time I'll be playing Return of the Obra Dinn blind. Now, I know next to nothing about this game except for the fact that it's a detective game of sorts and that it was made by Lucas Pope, the creator of Papers, Please. Now, it's uh, because of the Papers, Please game that I decided to buy this game immediately upon completing the first one, I mean not the first because it's not a sequel, but uh, immediately upon completing Papers, Please because I was so enamored with it that I thought, you know, uh, this guy is pretty good, he deserves, you know, the benefit of the doubt and I want to see what else he has to offer. I've heard a lot of good things about this game, but as I said, I know nothing about it except for the fact that you're a detective and you are supposed to find out what happened with the ship uh, over then. Now, I'm a little bit anxious about playing it because my recent adventures with Portal have proved to me that I'm in fact quite dumb, uh, bordering on retarded sometimes, so I'm a little bit worried that this game must, might, be, might be a little bit too smart for me and that it might uncover me as a dumbass. Uh, to the world, but oh well, I'm nonetheless curious about it, so without further ado, let's start. Although I would like to... like the, the music is really nice. Uh, it, there, there was a couple of um, louder moments that I wasn't expecting because it started um, very subdued. I wonder how much of a role music will play in general in this game. In Papers, Please, you only had like three um, music pieces for the whole game, but it, w it was enough to build a solid atmosphere, right? but enough of me rambling. Let's, uh, let's go. So, begin. Yeah, I, I just uh, started the game, as you can see, playtime two minutes to check um, if the sound is working correctly and all that. So, I think I'm actually going to delete it. I didn't... I didn't even... I barely even entered the ship, so that basically doesn't count. Let's begin. Mm, okay, so we lost at, at sea over then. A uh, crew of 51 men. I lost on the voyage to Orient. Uh, East India Company, so it's a British ship. Mm. Honorable East India Company, attention Chief Inspector, Insurance and Claims, uh, the Oberdin has returned. Uh, oh, so we're an uh, insurance uh, company, um, um, like uh, operative. That's, uh, I don't know, I don't even know what I wanted to say. I, I, it isn't exactly like surprising, it's just, I find it curious, you know. It isn't a role that you would uh, imagine is very exciting, and yet, Oh, it, I, I guess it was tired of waiting for me. I Not didn't click it. Any... Woke me up. Said you'd need ferry to the Obradin. Not many eager for that job. Seems a bit late, if you ask. I didn't. Huh. What's in the box? I don't know. I hoist it up in a few minutes. Hey, how? Carefully. Okay. So I guess this is the box they were talking about, but it doesn't seem like I can interact with it in any way. There's only a zoom action. I'm clicking the uh, action button, but it doesn't do anything. So I guess um, they were talking about how this guy is supposed to hoist it up on board. Now, I am very much in love with the aesthetics of this game. It is very unique mm, and atmospheric. And I understand that it was partially made because uh, it is developed by just one man, so he couldn't have made, you know, too com complicated of a graphics set. Uh, but I really think it's, it's really unique and cool. I, I would like more games in this style, to be honest. It looks almost like a, like a sketch. From a from a drawing book or something, you know, a period a period piece, uh, something that could, mm, you know, this this could be an illustration made by someone living 
in this time period. So I think it's all very fitting. Now, I'm not yet sure what I'm supposed to... Like, I... It doesn't look like I can interact with anything. Although there's a body, so... Hmm. Can't, can't do anything with this. Oh, I guess I can open a couple of doors. Can I close them? It seems they they close automatically. Mm. Okay, this this one is is closed. Hmm. I wonder if if the X at the bottom. Oi, it's too heavy. <laughs> so so, so I, I guess I am supposed to go back and get in myself. But then I'm not sure what was the point of me even getting on board. Seems a little bit pointless if you ask me, but oh well. It's too heavy. Take it yourself or open it here. Okay, so I can grab it. Okay, so there's a book inside that doesn't strike me as a particularly heavy object. Return of the Oberdin, a catalogue of adventure and tragedy. Um, find yourself aboard the Oberdin. Mm, my every intention to tell the tale within the pages of the book. Uh, basic outline. Uh, your presence is critical. I leave the discovery and the completion of the book in your hands. Mm, all will make sense in time. Use the pocket watch to determine the identity and fate of everyone aboard. Mm, complete the chapter accurately and return the book to the French Office of Affairs in Morocco. Uh, Henry Evans. Now, I gather from this that he was one of the passengers because he says he wants to tell the tale of the ship. How would he know the tale of the ship unless uh, he was on it at some point? Mm. Mm. Okay, so I guess this shows me the route and that the ship took. Okay, I'm not, not sure what's the significance of that at the moment. Mm. I guess I'm currently here. That's a, a lot of information, to be honest, you know, maps. Complete crew and passenger manifest. Uh, okay. So there were 60 people on board. But it says, it said earlier in the intro, 51 crew, crew. So nine of them were like passengers or something. Yeah, right. Passenger. Mm. Now, I wonder if, there, if this guy is listed on there. Uh, Henry Evans. Because I'm not, not sure what's his... Yeah, right. Okay, so he's, he was the, uh, the ship's surgeon. And apparently he, he survived uh, at least long enough to write at the beginning of this book. Um, so that's something I should probably keep in mind. Mm. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh there, there, there's a Polish guy on board. Uh, which is kind of confusing and potentially uh, wrong. Like historically wrong because this game takes place in 1807 and at the time Poland as a country didn't exist. It was partitioned in 1795 uh, between Austria, Prussia and Russia and basically disappeared from the map. So it's a little bit um, improbable or I could even say impossible for someone to declare their nationality as Polish at that time especially uh, while serving at a British uh, ship, because out of the all of the major powers in Europe, I think the only one, uh, the only one uh, that didn't, you know, officially recognize the partitioners of Poland was the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the Turks. Uh, 
but it's it wasn't because they loved us or anything it was mostly because they had an a conflict with russia so they took it as an opportunity to stick it up to russia and to uh, you know remind russia of their supposed uh, shady dealings so uh, as far as britain was concerned Pol poland didn't exist so that's a little bit weird although i guess uh, depending on what month this is set in uh, the the Duchy of Warsaw uh, would exist, which was which was uh, like a satellite state of uh, Napoleonic France, because curiously enough, for for some of you maybe, uh, Poland or well not Poland as a country but Polish people were one of the um, only people outside France who really um, like borderline worshipped Napoleon. Because they saw in him uh, the chance to defeat the the partitioners uh, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. Uh, so, after some of his initial victories, he established uh, the Duchy of Warsaw. Uh, but again, even if we said that, even if we assumed that the Duchy of Warsaw was like a proto-Polish state, um, I still think it's improbable or even next to impossible for uh, Olus Viator here to to identify as Polish while serving on a British ship, because obviously uh, Great Britain was one of the greatest enemies of, uh, Napoleon, of Napoleon, so I doubt they would recognize his, uh, you know, his creation of the Duchy of Warsaw, uh, especially because they were allied with Russia, for example, in an anti-Napoleonic uh, coalition, and Russia uh, was directly, mm, you know, it, it was directly due to the losses of Russia, uh, Prussia, and Austria that the Duchy, Duchy of Warsaw even started to exist. So that is a little bit inconsistent, and it's, it strikes me as weird because uh, obviously the creator of the game must have spent a lot of time. Uh, caring about historical details if he wanted to set his game uh, in the past on a ship and all that. And so, so, so it's, um, you know, um, interesting to me that he overlooked that. But then again, I, I suppose nobody outside Poland would even care or notice. Uh, it's not uh, particularly... Well, I guess partitions of Poland are somewhat well known, especially uh, in Europe. Uh, like in European uh, schools and all that, but uh, such things, things, things as the Duchy of Warsaw, I doubt anyone playing in the United States would even care or know about that. Uh, although another thing, uh, Olus is not exactly a Polish name, uh, as far as I know. Uh, it could be read as an uh, as a diminutive of uh, Olus. Olus would be with a like a Polish S with a. Mm, like S with a what's the, what's the what's the word? I damn it! I forgot the but it, it's a, like a special Polish character. Uh, so Olus would be a diminutive of Alexander, but it would still be weird for the official registry of the ship to um, denote the. Um, the, the crewman using his diminutive version of his name. So that's a little bit weird, but I got on a really long tangent here. Uh, what else? Uh, England, Persia, blah, 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 China, Russia. Mm. Now I wonder, I wonder if there are more such uh, inadequacies here that I that I didn't know that I don't notice because I am not from the particular country. Oh, Italy? Yeah, Italy. I guess would be another uh, kind of mistake because at that moment in history, Italy didn't really exist as a unified nation. It was a like the, the territory of Italy was contended between uh, various duchies princedoms and whatever, and I guess you couldn't really declare your nationality as Italian because uh, such a concept as an Italian uh, nationality didn't really exist at the point you would identify as a subject of a particular princedom or duchy or whatever. Mm, so that's a little bit interesting too, mm, but I, I spent a lot of time here. I guess there's no point 
in sitting at this screen too much at the moment. Um, if I didn't take a look at any of the corpses or anything, um, sketches of life aboard. Mm, okay. Mm, for most and royalty. Now I'm. I must admit that I have no idea. Like, I'm assuming Formosa is a historical name for a region that got changed later in history, and I must admit my ignorance here. I have no idea what that is referring to. Obviously, it's uh, somewhere in Asia, uh, judging from their attire and their um, and their overall looks, which I guess makes sense because uh, the Oberdin was lost. Mm, returning from the Orient, so it, it, it's totally plausible for them to have some Asian people on board. Mm, justice at sea. I guess there was an execution at some point. Mm. Okay, so these are all the various chapters, and I guess they will get filled as I uh, as I progress through the game. There is nothing here at the moment. A soldiers of Sea, the Doom. Mm, that's ominous. This chapter will remain unknown until you leave the ship and return to the the book to me. Mm, yeah, so that's the Henry Evans again. So, so I guess he's. I wonder if he, if he, if we will meet him, uh, because it seems to me it's a little bit nonsensical. Because if he is alive and expecting me to return the book to him, why couldn't he uh, fill in more details? Mm, escape, the end. Uh, okay, there's a glossary at the end as well. Uh, I'm not going to read those yet, mm, although, well, I, I obviously know what a captain is, and a mate, and a bosun, but a purser, I'm not familiar with this term, um, accounts for all cargo value and trade transactions, uh, manages a small, small items store for crew, uh, so it's like an accountant on board, a uh, carpenter, that's a uh, houseman, blah blah blah, steward, um, Ser servant to the officer or high rated crew member, general duties. Okay. Mm. What's an orlop deck? A mid deck above the lowest deck, containing storage cabins, animal, animal pens, and the ship's steering tiller. Okay. Mm. And there's like a weir weird skull in here, but I can't really uh, interact with this. Mm, and there's a pocket watch uh, that the guy mentioned. Hmm, Memento Mortem. Remember death, yeah, right. right. But what's interesting about that in particular is that usually, uh, I think uh, Memento Mortem is, uh, it means, indeed means remember death, but it, it means remember like death as a, as a verb? Rem re remember... No, 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 it's the, other, it's the other way around. Remember death as a concept, it's a noun. Mm, and the usual way uh, people render this saying is uh, memento mori, which comes from the verb version. So it means remember death as in remember uh, that you will die, remember that people die. So I wonder if there's a significance uh, to that difference, or is it a, um, an overlook on the part of, of the developer? Because uh, Memento Mori is a, a much more widely known version of that proverb. Of that proverb, uh, it it became especially known, you know, in the middle age, in the middle, age, middle ages, and later on, it was often inscribed upon things or you know uh, revealed in paintings. There were, were there were there were a lot of paintings of uh, like uh, still life with skulls and the the proverb memento mori underneath and whatever. So I wonder if if that's significant somehow. Um, well, I guess now that I have the, um, the 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 pocket watch, I can use it on this corpse over here. 
and supposedly it, it will help me to determine the cause of death. Captain! Open the door! Kick it in! Ah! Lest we break it down and take more than those shells! You bastards may taste exactly what I give you! Okay, so clearly this guy has been shot uh, by the captain. Mm, although I have, at the moment, no idea. Okay, so, oh, that's interesting. It shows me uh, the relation to the to the picture earlier, which I guess it's it's uh, mightily helpful. So this guy is an officer as well, judging from his attire. Mm, this guy is currently alive, uh, as of the moment of this memory at least, mm, and this is the captain, obviously. Mm. Anything else left to discern here? Ah, there's someone else here. Uh, is he falling or... Oh, I guess I only have either limited time within each memory, or maybe it's uh, conditional upon whether I have inspected all of the parts that are relevant at the moment. Hmm. So, so, so I guess this part um, is chronol chronologically one of the last parts, because it's the chapter 10, the end. Mm, who is this? How did they die? I have no idea who, who this is at the moment, but I know he was... Uh, he was shot with a gun by the captain, uh, Robert Witterell. Okay. Mm. Hmm. So, so it's weird. I, I thought I left the memory, but it seems I'm still inside, but I'm not sure what else I can gather from here, apart from the fact that there's a guy... Uh, he's, I think he's coming up the stairs and not falling, so that isn't particularly helpful, especially because I have no idea of I, how to identify him. I guess I would have to chain a couple of those memories, Mm, and then, you know, piece them together, as it were. Uh, so maybe if I... I guess this will return me to the present. Mm, yeah, so this is the guy that was shot by the captain. Uh, and I guess this is the captain himself? Maybe? Because he, I think it's a, ca a captain's hat, like a cap, uh, but uh, I have no idea how he died. It's pretty much decomposed at this point. I guess I'll enter the other memory and see. Where are they? Must be in here someplace. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the sea. That's a lie. Hmm. Okay, so is this the captain? Nope, it's one of the guys from before. I guess it's the other one uh, that was besides this one. This one died because he was shot, and then the other one ran inside. And this is the captain, right? I recognize his face. Okay, so he's quite a badass, it seems. He killed the other one, because I guess he's pretty much dead, uh, getting knifed in the throat. But I think he also managed to stab the captain, but I'm not sure if it killed him. Um, anywhere... Oh, <laughs> there's a guy either... Ju oh, it's a guy jumping with a knife in his... Uh, in his mouth, it's a guy from before, so I guess he wanted to um, corner the captain or something and get him from behind. That's interesting, but the captain is shaping up to be quite a badass, you know, taking all of those assailants. 
I still don't know who this is, but I know he was, uh, what's the word, knifed? <laughs> it's funny that it's a verb in English. In Polish you would say struck with a knife or something. There isn't a special verb for that. Uh, by the captain, Robert Vitoro. Uh, okay. Oh, and it shows me the other ones present in the particular scene. So this is the captain and the other guy, but uh, this is the guy that died. But I... I have no idea of knowing who that is at the moment, so I guess I'll just have to keep exploring. I'm a little bit confused by the way uh, those memories work, because at first they uh, black out automatically, I am not clicking anything, uh, and they take me back to the book, but then when I return I'm still inside the memory and I have to uh, have to leave uh, like manually by going through this gate. I think it would make more sense if the book activated upon uh, me leaving whenever I choose to do that. Okay, there's another body here. So, so, so this is the guy uh, that the captain killed, so I guess maybe this is the captain because he was struck, so maybe he died uh, sometime later. Apparently not. Apparently the captain is indeed quite a badass because uh, he just killed another guy. And that's the guy from here that jumped with the knife in his mouth. And he got, I think, clubbed with a, like with a staff or uh, the back end of a spear uh, by the captain. This is the captain. Mm, but I still don't know any of their names. There's a body inside here, inside the cabin, and it's a woman's body. Interesting. So I guess this has to be one of the passengers, right? Because at the time, uh, they wouldn't allow women uh, to work as part of the crew. Hmm. Yes, so I guess it uh, blacks out whenever I, I inspect all of the bodies at the scene, but it's a little bit weird. Be be because after that it will still return me uh, inside the memory. Uh, how, how did this guy die? I don't know who this is, but I know that he was... Hmm, I think clubbed by the captain. So let's close it. Yeah, and I'm still here, but I have nothing else to do here because I alre already uh, inspected all of the bodies. So the only thing I can do really is leave. Mm. Okay, so that's the third victim of the captain. There is nothing on the catwalk here. Mm. Okay, there's a body here. I'll check this one first and then the, the wo woman's body. Oh, it's already decomposed as well. So it, it must have been a lot of time. Like, I'm not exactly sure how long it takes for all of the flesh to decompose, but I would assume it's at least like a year or something. Although I guess it also depends on, on the climate and mm, the level of humidity. I think at sea it would, would, it would be quicker because it's very humid. Mm, but still, it must have been some time, uh, you know, since, since they died. They are all pretty much skeletons at this point. Mm, yeah, this guy as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll check the first body here. Give me. 
everything. Hmm. Okay, so that's the captain, and he committed suicide by shooting himself with the pistol, and he did it after his wife, uh, I guess this must be his wife, he was talking to her, so it makes sense for her either be dying nearby or be already dead nearby, uh, so I guess that must be her. Mm, he shot himself and he also said that he killed her brother, her, uh, his wife's brother, uh, with a pistol, he shot him, so I assume it must be this guy who, judging from his attire, is one of the officers as well. So that should be pretty easy to um, to decipher from the list of the crew now, uh, assuming that the um, captain's wife uh, shares his family name, which would be um, you know pretty um, common in in those days. It it is even today, to be honest. I think in most of the countries. Uh, okay, so this soul. This person's face is no longer blurred, which means they can be identified. Oh, so that's what the blurriness means. Use the book and the pocket watch to gather information. Revisit memories. Use the books along with the conversation to find about names, relationships, appearances and roles. Mm, there were 60 people on the ship when it left for England. Wait. Ah, right, because one... Mm, the 61 person was the surgeon who get off, uh, got off earlier, uh, earlier and he wrote the book. Mm, you will have to make assumptions usually using partial information, but I, I think I'm pretty certain I can get those three, which I guess totally makes sense because it's like the introduction to the game, so it's supposed to be easy uh, to dem demonstrate how the mechanics of the game work. So this is Robert Vitrell, the captain. And he uh, committed suicide with a gun. This may or may not be correct. Mm. Ah, fates are validated in sets of three. Okay, so so, so that's uh, cool and interesting because it's it's a very Deliberate, deliberately chosen, I assume, uh, to prevent you from just guessing everyone, one by one, but it's a small enough um, set of people that you can go step by step. You're, you're never held in, um, you know, in limbo for too long. So, so that's really interesting and cool. Uh, okay. Now, this guy, no wait, 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 there's a, there's a, um, his wife, where, where I would find, uh, where I would find her, oh, I guess she must have died a lot earlier, uh, judging from her position, oh, wait, I didn't, I think I didn't even inspect her yet, that's why she isn't in, uh, that's why she isn't in the book. Yeah, so I guess I have to exit the the memory and get into the other one. Hmm, what's that? I'm not sure, to be honest. Ah, okay. It shows me when uh, when uh, did the particular chapter take place. So, for example, chapter 10, I guess, took place somewhere uh, nearby the Canary Islands and Madeira. So, pretty close, well, relatively close back to Great Britain like comparing it to the overall distance of the voyage. Mm. But I think I haven't inspected her, so that's why she isn't in the book. Uh, so I have to do it before I can manage to... Yeah. 
Wow, 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 wow. I totally wasn't expecting uh, the supernatural to play a role in this game, but apparently they were attacked by a kraken or something. Wow. There's a lot happening in this scene. I can't even... Okay, it's one of the officers. I don't think I've encountered him before. Ah, so I can open the book while examining a face to flip directly to the sketch. Okay. But it's not that useful because if I right-click, it highlights the face. Mm. So that's already useful enough, I guess. Yeah, but that doesn't exactly tell me anything. I want to check the other woman. Wait, are they... It's impossible for them to be the same person, so... Am I... Ah, right, they're... Hmm. Okay, I, I have no idea how this works, to be honest, because this time I definitely didn't inspect all of the face, all of the faces and all of the people in the scene, and it's still closed, so... Oh, and apparently the Kraken attack was a lot earlier than the end with the captain uh, shooting himself, so... Wow, there was a lot happening. Hmm... Who is this? This is the captain's wife, right? Well, I'll leave it be for now. I want to explore the rest of the scene. Uh, although... Wait, no! What What did I even do? I wanted to... What, what's happening? I sort of, sort of reflexively clicked. Uh, I wanted to inspect his face uh, against the drawing, but instead I... Hmm. It's weird, I, uh, I pulled up the, the watch inside uh, a memory already. I'm not sure what's happening now. Hmm. I guess the game is expecting me to do something. Okay, I can't, can't pull up the, um, the watch near this guy, so I guess... Hmm. It, it shows here, so I guess there has to be something special about this place. Oh, man, this guy was torn in half, I assume by the Kraken? Okay, I'm doing something, but to be honest, I have only a very slight idea of what that is. There's something weird happening. It's like a trail for me to follow. Hmm. Okay, th th this body just materialized out of thin air. So what I'm assuming this means is that I can find like the it's it's a means for the scenes to link with uh, with one with one another because obviously I am arriving at the ship uh, at the end, um, which was this part, and then I have to somehow uh, get to the beginning. So I'm assuming that within particular memories I can find a particular corpse that sort of anchors me in the previous chapter. And then I go from the end, which was this situation here with the captain, uh, further and further back in time uh, towards the beginning. But before I uh, do that, I want to stay here and check the book. Now, what was the right tab? Martin. Hmm. Okay, so I assume this is the captain's... Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Wait, I didn't... I need to get back inside the... How did I... How do I... I need to get back inside this memory. 
because I didn't expect, I didn't inspect all of the corpses because I accidentally clicked this one and it transported me out. So I guess I have to use it again on this one. Okay, so this is her, right? Because that's where the memory, right, right, right. This is the, the this is the captain's wife. And those two, wi two women here are totally different people, which I'm not sure how to identify at the moment, but at least it's actually very good because I know who this is. Uh, and I know that she died, well, crushed by, by the falling mast or something. So that should help me clear that up. Mm, there's a bunch of faces I can't exactly identify yet, although she mentioned Martin. Uh, and Martin is obviously not the, mm, the captain, because captain is, she was talking about the captain as a separate person and the captain is named Robert. So that has to be significant somehow as well, but now I should at least be able to fill this um, because uh, I assume she would be called uh, Viterel as well. Uh, yeah, Abigail Hoskut Viterel, passenger from Scotland. That would be the captain's wife. And she was... Uh, she was crushed by, um, I guess out of all of those, I would say by the rigging, which is all of the ropes and uh, masts and whatever else um, is needed to sail the ship, because it's not cargo, it was not a like a crate or something. So I would say the rigging. Um, okay. And now she was calling, now this Martin guy, I wonder, how many Martins uh, are there on the ship? Because, mm, wait, the captain uh, shot her brother with a pistol and her brother was one of the, I assume, lower officers because she, she had a, I mean, he had a, had a cap mm, and a, like a uniform. So, Wait, I was supposed to be looking for guys named Martin too, because she was calling to Martin at the time of her death. Nicholas, Alexei, Abraham, William. Peter. That's a lot of names. Mm. Mm. Okay, there's Martin Perrot, but not sure how would that help me. Wait, Abigail Hoskut, Witterow, and here mm, we have William Hoskut first mate, so an officer, so like did she have like a double surname? Uh, nowadays it would usually be rendered with a hyphen uh, but assuming that's true, then this would be her brother um, and he would be the one getting shot at how do I Wait, I think I'll do it from the other side, as it were, by getting to the particular section of the book and highlighting it there. 
Mm, Abigail, okay, let's go Twitter now. And now... Ah, it was one of the last chapters, right? Mm, chapter 10. Mm. Yeah, this guy, uh, he's an officer, clearly, uh, judging from his attire, and he's the one that was shot, so that's uh, the wife's brother, and I assume it's this one, William Hosgood. So let's check it. Okay, so that's the that's the first success, uh, as small as it is. As it is. Mm. And I guess it's a very good moment to end the episode, because it has been long enough. I think I'm done with this part of the ship, and that I am now supposed to check the corpse mm, that has uh, appeared over here. Uh, but I'll do that in the next episode. For now, I think it's a good place to end it. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!